Hello, Jerry here, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 24 of Ask Jerry Tashwa. Today's question is really an interesting question, and it's almost like uh, a two-semester course in a major music school. But it comes to me from Tyler in Oregon. Hi, Jerry. Really love your videos and playing. Thanks. I notice that when you play chords and comp behind others, your voicings are large and have a very full sound. I'm struggling to find these voicings and move from chord to chord. I have your book, Contemporary Mallet Method, and it has been very helpful. Can you talk about chord voicings and what you might be thinking as you play? Again, thanks, Tyler from Oregon. So this question um, is involving playing chords and getting a fuller sound so that we can compete with, with guitar players and we can compete with piano players. But before I get into it, I always forget to say that if you want to ask me a question, simply go to my website, which is tashwa.com, T-A-C-H-O-I-R.com. And in the upper right-hand corner is a contacts button. Just click on that, fill out your name and information, and ask your question, and maybe we'll do one of these videos for you. Um, I always forget to mention that, and if you could, go ahead and subscribe to this, and that way we'll notify you uh, when there's a new video out. But anyway, I remember when I first got into playing chords on mallet instruments, everything I played was smaller than an octave, and it was like in root position. So if I wanted a C chord, C major chord, that was the one I used, C, E, G, B. That's how I found those chords. If I wanted an F chord, I'd move up to F in root position. So everything was in root position, smaller than an octave, thus producing a fairly thin sound. Now, I would hear guitar players, and I would hear piano players, and piano players, of course, have 10 fingers and 88 notes, and, and when they play a chord, I mean, they can put a lot into it. And here I am with four mallets trying to, to sound comparable to the strength that they're able to get. So I, I started figuring out ways to make my sound bigger. And one of the easiest ways I found out is if you can take your chord bigger than an octave, if you can make it actually space-wise bigger than that little octave that we were talking about, then it becomes even fuller. So what I did real quickly is I took this chord that's in root position, C, E, G, B, root position, and I exchanged places with the outside two voices. So the root that's on the bottom, I put it on the top. The major seven that was on the top, I put it on the bottom. So I'm just basically taking the outside two notes and exchanging places with them. And it creates a chord bigger than an octave. So here's the original sound. Here's the expanded one. So you can hear it sort of has a wider spread and just, just a fuller sound. Now, when you do this on major seven chords, the problem exists in that the outside two notes forms an interval that's pretty horrible in music, a flat nine interval, right? But in a confinement of vibes, marimba, guitar, piano, organ, any instrument that you don't have to deal with, like tuning issues, it sort of gets masked and you don't really hear that dissonance as much as there's something in there that creates a very full sound. Here it is again. I mean, the dissonance isn't bad. Now, the problem is, if you would write this for, like, say, four trumpet players that have to deal with intonation, the top guy playing the C would be hearing the guy playing the B, and he'd want to go flat, and the guy playing the B would hear the top C, and it would be at such a distance, he would be wanting to go sharp. So they would have intonation issues. Now, if that became a problem for you, and you didn't like that much distance within this chord voicing, then all you got to do is get rid of the root now. But remember, the root that used to be on the bottom is now on top and substitute tension 9 for the root. So instead of playing the C up here, which is the root, I'm going to go one step above, and it's tension 9. So here's the original chord. Here's the one expanded. Here's the one with tension 9. So each time you can hear this chord just kind of getting a little bit thicker and a little bit bigger. Now, by opening up your chord voicings, this then allows you to go from chord to chord 
a lot easier in finding notes that are common tones between chord to chord and hanging on to them and not having a whole lot of movement. Before, when I was playing things in root position, my, my mallets looked like this. I was moving around so much to try to go from chord to chord. Now when I play, it looks like this. You don't see a whole lot of movement because I'm spreading the notes out giving me room then to work the magic of finding the common tones from chord to chord and keeping those and just moving the actual notes that need to move. And what I try to do also to get a fuller sound is I try to keep my guide tones. The guide tones are the thirds and sevenths of the chord. Those are the two notes, the essence of the chord. If you have just those two notes, you can pretty much hear the, the outline of the chord. I try to keep them in my left hand because this obviously, this range of the instrument is the biggest warmest sound because it's the bigger bar. So if I can keep that in my left hand, then it frees my right hand to play another chord tone or a tension nine or a ten another different tension or the melody, whatever I need to play up here. So it just kind of helps me make sure that I have the essence of the chord and everything else that I want to add later on. Now, there was a course that I took at Berklee College of Music and I was reluctant to take it at first because it's predominantly a big band writing course and it was taught by Herb Pomeroy and it was called line writing. So anyway, everybody told me, Jerry, if you're going to Berkeley, this is the class you've got to take. This is the one, if, if you don't take anything else, take this class. And there's a lot of prerequisites to get into this class. You have to actually test into the class. So it's, it's complicated to get into. But anyway, I got into this class and Herb taught something that absolutely changed my way of thinking about chords and playing on the vibraphone to be able to get thicker, fatter, richer chords and sound just a little bit more than just a, you know, a small instrument that it is. And his uh, idea is the use of prime distances is what he called. Prime distances are half steps, major sevens, and flat nine. Half step, obviously very distant, major seven, and flat nine, as we talked about before. So those, those intervals are, are really harsh. But in a confinement of a chord when they are allowed, when they are one of the either chord tones or tension that's permitted within that chord, and again, that's a whole other semester of, of analysis and understanding uh, tensions and natural tensions and altered tensions that go with specific chords. That's something I'm not capable of getting into in a short little video. But let me give you an example. D minor 7 flat 5. I'm just going to play it in root position. D, F, A flat, and C. D minor 7 flat 5. Simple chord, stack in thirds, no big deal. Now, if I want to create a little bit more aggressiveness, I got to find a half step somewhere in this voicing that will give me that friction, that rub to make the chord a little bit more aggressive. Well, if I got rid of the third, which is right here, and put the tension 11, which is the note G, that creates a half step with the flatted 5. So listen to this. Here's the original chord. Here's the one by just putting the tension 11 instead of the third. Here's the original. So you can hear that friction and that friction is power and that's kind of what we're looking for. So as you're playing your chords, obviously you don't want to start out a tune with like power chords. You want to start out kind of open easy and as you're developing your, your song, your composition, your, your performance, your comping, whatever you're doing, then you get more aggressive. And, and the way to get more aggressive is by incorporating half steps, major sevens, and flat nines when allowed within the confinement of that chord to give you a fuller sound. And then making sure that you open up your chords to get them as wide as you possibly can within reason so that you can have room then to manipulate your inside mallets to be able to go from chord to chord as smoothly as possible with nice voice leading and, and make it sound good. So that's really the essence of what I'm doing to try to get fuller sounds. And, and it is something you really, really have to think about. Your left hand, again, you want to try to keep those guide tones, the thirds and the sevenths in the left hand. That's going to give you a real good, strong, full sound. And then you can figure out what your right hand needs to do to create that half step major seven or flat nine within the confinement of the chord to be more aggressive. So that's, that's all I can offer, Tyler, at this point, and I hope uh, that gives you enough information. If you look at my book, there's a whole chapter on how to do this and how to uh, 
to get fuller sounds and also how to expand your chords to get just a more open sound. So check that out and thanks again for a great question. I appreciate your, uh, and keep writing to me and ask me some questions. I'm looking forward to dealing with this some more. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.